Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Red Lantern Corps leader, J.J. Stewart. And we're doing a reaction to Comic Storian. Rita, he's doing a read-along to DC's Deceased. He did one and two. I'll make sure I have that in the, dis well, not in the description. I'll have it in the tab bar to your right side. The first tab will be... The first episode, and then I'll have uh, a screen bar of the second episode. And then I'll have a playlist with both first, the first and second episode of Deceased with him doing a read-along. And what I like to do is I listen and look at the pictures of, you know, if you don't know what a read-along is, where somebody reads the thing and you listen to him speak and you look at the pictures of him speaking of the comic book. And so, I did that for one and two. So we're gonna do that for episode three. I've been waiting for him to drop episode three. Let's get it. This is Wonder Woman. Take it away, comic story. I'll be quiet for this. Today on Comic Story, and Batman is finally going to discover who the vampires really are. This is the Comic Story and channel where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks in single issues. I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. I basically cut out the fluff, cut out a lot of the extra stuff, and just give you the bare bones plot. The point of this is so that you know what's going on in the world of comic books, but it gives you the ability to go make your own collection by going to your local comic book store or going to your online retailer. You'll get extra artwork, you'll get extra context, and more of the jokes if you do that. All alterations to the panel section and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective owners. Now on that note guys, let's get into DC Vampires 3 and 4. To catch you up where we are, we discovered that a vampire was trying to warn the Justice League about a vampire civil war, only to discover that Hal Jordan is actually a vampire. He then murdered one of the Wonder Twins and then murdered the Flash. But the other superheroes are beginning to catch on as to what is going on. So let's get into DC vs Vampires 3 and 4. As the League gathers around the beach where Hal murdered Flash, Hal looks away asking, who could have done this to Barry? Wonder Woman tells him that they will find out whoever did this, that she promises, and Batman begins to examine the body, and Martian Manhunter asks if he has any theories yet. Batman tells him, none that I'm willing to share. But Hal takes charge, directing the others on where they should begin their investigations, and as he looks towards Batman, Batman tells him, I know what to do, don't worry. As everyone leaves, Batman looks over to see the Wonder Twin, Jaina, has stared off into the ocean. Batman then takes to the sewers, and as he works on his scans, he tells Jaina she can come. But more importantly, why are you here? You could be helping Wonder Woman or Superman, they... She stops him and tells him, It's him, isn't it? You're looking for Xan down here. Please tell me you know about my brother. After thinking for a moment, Batman sighs and tells her, I believe the vampire Andrew Bennett came looking for help, but he vanished right around the time your brother went missing. I found two sets of trace DNA in the Hall's infirmary. Someone cleaned up, but they were sloppy. One set vampiric, the other was alien. The highest concentration were around the sink and in the pipes. Jaina looks at the water, asking how can it be she could still feel him down there. Please, let her help. The next day, on the surface of Gotham, Penguin huffs as he runs through the streets, telling a pack of vampires chasing him, I'll hurt you if I must! He trips, falling flat on his face, and he slides right to the feet of Zatanna. She smiles. Oh, you must be in a hurry. And Penguin yells, I will pay you for your help! I'm being chased by vampires! The vampires tell Zatanna that they don't want any trouble, but the Birdman is theirs. He might be working with Lex Luthor. He shouts out that this is a lie. He hasn't spoken with Luther. They just want to turn him into one of those blood-sucking fiends. She sighs, asking, Why is it better the little man is the more dooms that we want him to be one of us? Penguin realizes what she said, turning, What? What are you? She flashes her fangs. Sometimes a girl just wants to eat some junk food. Later that night, at Flash's crime scene, Wonder Woman looks for clues on the beach when she feels Hal approaching her from behind. She tells him hello, and he asks if everything's okay. She tells him that their friend died yesterday. No, everything is not okay. But there is something that she has noticed. He seems to have gotten over it rather quickly. He was referring to Barry in the past tense. She keeps speaking of him as if he's coming back. Hal says, well, Barry always had a crush on you. Everyone does, including me. 
Losing Barry made me realize that the thing we're looking for is sometimes right in front of us the whole time. She turns back to Hal, wrapping up with the lasso. I was thinking the same thing. He laughs, showing his fangs, telling her, Being a vampire is quite wonderful. I thought I understood power when I got my ring, but... She pulls on the lasso. You killed Barry! He, he was your friend! I was having a hard time believing I lost one friend today, but now I know I've lost two. He leans forward, looking into Wonder Woman's eyes. I'm so sorry you feel that way, but you didn't lose me. In fact, I want to bring you to the other side. She tries to move, but feels her body freeze to the vampiric gaze. How are you doing this? And Hal tells her. Hypnosis isn't lying. It's speaking to your vulnerability. Hal presses his fangs against Wonder Woman's neck, telling her, Welcome to the new world. Meanwhile, back over in Gotham, Black Canary looks at Penguin's dead body when someone in the shadows asks, Why is she here? She tells the voice that she's examining a dead gangster. What are you doing here, Robin? He steps out, telling her that the vampires are hunting all over the city, and he's putting a stop to it. But then he finds her standing over a dead body. Where's Green Arrow been recently? She laughs, telling him that she doesn't remember. But it seems that they're both a little suspicious of each other. She knows a way to settle this, and he won't like it. The two immediately begin to fight, but through the punches and the kicks, Black Canary sticks Damien with something. What the hell did you put in me? Black Canary holds up a vial of his blood, stating, It's what I took out of you. After I test this, I'll come and find you, little Robin. Wait, so you're not a vampire? She kicks him down. Nope, and I'm hoping you're not either. Meanwhile, back with Batman and Jaina. Jaina leads Batman to where she feels the strongest connection to her brother, telling Batman that this is it. He puts on his rebreather, jumping into the water, and a few moments later resurfaces, handing Jaina a severed finger. I'm sorry, but this is all I could find. She screams, asking who did this? Who could have done this to her brother? Batman looks at the finger, telling her, Bone is hard to cut through. Even the strongest metal blade leaves particle fragments along the cut. But there aren't any here. The blade was in metal. It was made out of hard light. Later, the sun rises over a deserted truck stop, and a voice asks Black Canary for the password, which she promptly tells the person inside to shut up. Arsenal pulls out his bow, telling her, I'm not supposed to let anyone in who doesn't know the password. And she tells him that if she had turned Hey, morning, y'all. Jake with Bullet Safe Bulletproof Vest here. Welcome to today's episode of How Bullet Turned, she still remembered the password. Green Arrow steps out telling her, It's fine. Half the time I don't remember the password either. So what's it like out there? She tells him, Well, the good news is that his theory about Penguin as a vampire was wrong. The bad news is she knows because the vampires killed him. She also ran into Robin, the little one. She isn't sure if he was turned, but he was acting weird. Green Arrow tells her, Well, that's not an act. That kid is weird. Black Canary holds up a handful of syringes, telling him that, well, they could find out for sure, but Green Arrow says that if Batman turned, he's smart enough to beat any test they'd have. At this point, they don't trust any of his people, no matter what they find. Back over at the Hall of Justice, an emergency meeting is called. Everyone gathers around, but Superman notices, even though everyone is called, Batman is not present. Wonder Woman walks in, stating, that's because Batman was not alerted. Hal and I found evidence that Batman killed Barry Allen. Meanwhile, over in a dark, quiet pub in the Docklands of London, John Constantine tells the bartender that if they're going to just keep pouring like that, just leave the bloody bottle. Always griping how nobody ever comes in here. But their servant drinks like a nun stealing sips at a sacrament. But behind him, Zatanna laughs, asking if he's making friends. And Constantine takes a drag of his cigarette, asking, what is a fine magician like yourself doing in such a dump? She tells him that she's looking for the man who likes to drink in a dump, and Constantine tells her, Well, you found me. Pull up a stool. She whispers, actually, she was wondering if maybe they could go somewhere a bit more... private? As the two step into the back room, Constantine begins to open the bar counter to get another drink, and just as Zatanna shows her fangs, Constantine waves his hand, binding her in place. Constantine asks, We can just skip the whole biting part. She yells at him, asking, How did you know? Give me some credit. How long have we known each other, Z? But with another wave of his hand, he frees her, and Zatanna asks, You're not going to kill me? He tells her that she's already dead. Besides, as she may have noticed, he's got a real lack of people who will sit and listen to him gripe. So what's it like being dead? Meanwhile, over at the Batcave, Batman combs through his records, trying to collect as many blood samples as he can when he notices something in the shadows. As he trails off, Alfred asks if everything's all right, and Batman tells him, Yes, I just remembered. It might rain. Oh, I see, now. Batman presses a button and the entire cave goes dark except for the screens on the computer. He stands up and a green arrow shoots through his back, with Green Arrow stepping out, asking, 
I'm sorry it had to come to this, Bats. I wasn't too eager to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. Not that I couldn't. However, as Green Arrow gets closer to Batman, he finds that he just shot a mannequin. Oh. Oh, this is bad. Batman charges in, punching him. You came for me in my own home! The two go back and forth, exchanging punches back and forth until Green Arrow shoots Batman with a water arrow, telling him, you can burn in hell! Batman then throws him, tackling Green Arrow to the ground. I thought you'd be harder to manage. And Green Arrow tells him, screw you two! Batman pulls out his stake and presses it towards Green Arrow's chest, asking, what was in the water? Green Arrow tells him, it was holy water. Are you trying to stake me? They both then come to the realization that neither of them are vampires. Back over in London, Constantine and Zatanna continue their friendly chat when suddenly Dr. Fate appears yelling, You must be under guard! She is one of them, Constantine! As Zatanna launches herself at Fate, Constantine waves his arms, binding her again, stating, We can't have that. As Zatanna asks why, Dr. Fate obliterates her, and Constantine shouts, asking, Was that bloody necessary? She was our friend! Dr. Fate says a vampire kingdom is marching to war. The very fate of the world is at stake. Constantine grabs his drink. Yeah, yeah. When isn't it? Back at the Batcave, Green Arrow goes over his findings, telling Batman that he is hearing whispers and rumors that have all pointed to a hero being turned. And not to be an ass or anything, but there is only one hero that goes out at night, dresses up like a bat, and lives in caves. Batman laughs. <laughs> you were gonna murder me on a hunch? I have a... Uh, other sources, source I'm not going to be sharing. Your suspicions are half right. They did turn a hero, but it's not me. They killed Barry. Grand Arrow asks, well, what do we do now? And Batman begins to share his findings on Hal Jordan. The two begin to go through different villains who may have been turned or otherwise killed, but Batman stops for a moment, stating, I need to know something. We might have to kill someone that we care about. Can you do that? Grand Arrow tells him to ask him when the time comes. Just then, the alarm goes off, and as the two quickly suit up, Wonder Woman walks in and telling them, We all need to talk. Green Arrow lets out a sigh of relief. Thank God! We have some horrible news that- But Batman interrupts him. Why did you come here? We know what happened to Barry, and it's not your fault, Bruce. Green Arrow tries to explain that there's a misunderstanding, but Batman tells him, She knows. And he reaches for his stakes. Suddenly, Hal appears from the shadows, catching the stakes, telling him, You may have dropped these. Green Arrow defends himself from Wonder Woman, asking, What is going on? This is Anna! What are we doing? And Batman tells him, She's one of them! Green Arrow asks if he's sure, because he's shooting at her! Another alarm then goes off, and Green Arrow asks, And what does that one mean? Bad things. Before Green Arrow could finish asking how bad, Superman and the rest of the League crash in with Superman telling everyone, All right, all right, just calm down. Batman turns to him, Are you here for us or them? We're going to help. Both of you. Batman braces himself, asking, Green Arrow, do you remember what I asked earlier? It's time! And there you have it, issues three and four of the Vampire series. Now, if you want to know what's going to happen next in the conclusion to this little storyline, which is very similar to Deceased, but with vampires, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell. We bring you anywhere from three to seven comic book themed videos on a weekly basis. We also like to do a lot of shorts, getting you up to date on a lot of information involved in the comic book world. So if you want to be a part of that, make sure you subscribe today. I also want to clarify something, because a lot of you are going to be like, uh, uh, the name is Constantine, or, uh, the name's Constantine. Constantine and Constantine is one of those situations where it was mispronounced and misprinted multiple times. It's gone back and forth. There's even an in-joke with Constantine stating that people mispronounce it as Constantine. But it's one of those things where it's become more accepted to call him Constantine and Constantine. The hardcores know that the original pronunciation is Constantine, but Constantine is what is said generally everywhere else at this point. It's very similar to the Ra's al Ghul and Ra's al Ghul situation. Once it was said in the movies in one specific way, that's how it was pronounced, regardless of what you want it to be. Just be thankful that Symbiote wasn't the finalized pronunciation for Venom, and we don't all have to now start calling symbiotes Symbiotes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your continued support, and I'll see you next time, right here.